Hi from Sweet Swine of Mine Distributing. I want to thank y'all for joining us. And as you can tell, that the cat. Yeah. Old school. We're going old school tonight, Jack. <laughs> and as you can tell, the cowboy hat won. So we're all good. What are we doing tonight, Brother Mark? Well, since this is kind of in the logo. Yeah. Figure we need to do as much with this as we can. Yeah, that's right. So in my book, and we from cooking the cast iron, the better. And we're cooking a steak contest tomorrow. Of course, we're not going to cook it in cast iron. We're going to use the no. PK. But uh, you see in a few of these pop up in the circuit where folks are cooking cast iron and they're searing their steak and some are doing well. Yeah, that's right. Will so, Collier and those guys. I've seen a few of them do it. And, and, you know, to be honest with you, my favorite way to eat a steak and my wife's favorite way to eat more than often than anything is sous vide finished in this cast iron yeah. skillet. So, a little butter, a little rosemary, a little garlic, a little garlic. That's the way I like all it. All that kind of stuff. Uh, we like I got it. the thumbs up that the fan's okay. So I, Thank I, goodness. That's fat what I'm boy talking. says, we can keep the fan <laughs> on. So um, we're going to try sear our hand at searing this just from sort of a room temp state. Okay. So what I did is I took these two cold ribeyes that were left over from uh, one of our steak cook-offs. Mm -hmm. And we set them out here and let them dry, put some paper towels around them. Coated them pretty heavy in some double garlic butter. Okay, white good lighter. stuff. Yep. And then uh, let them sit there and on the counter and sort of come up to temperature. And if I had to guess, they, I mean, I'm going to say they're probably 85 degrees. Yeah. 82 degrees out here somewhere right now. Look at there. I was wrong. 87 degrees. All right. So what that does, y'all, is kind of like reverse searing the steak instead of taking it out of the fridge cold. And put it in there and getting a sear on both sides and the center is purple and under super rare yeah this way hopefully we'll get medium rare with a good sear on both sides because it's already warm yeah does it not seem to be such a shock to the meat yep is that kind of way that is and i had uh matt overson explained it best i think he did a class up here and he talked about the temperature curve yeah so if you think about time and temperature right yeah and uh or vice versa time and yeah. <laughs> so think about this if you put a steak on and it's when it's really cold right yeah then when it, it's really cold and it takes off and getting hot well you're gonna have a curve it looks like this it's, it's gonna, be gonna down keep here, rising on you and it's it's got a sharp curve yeah so when you pull it off it's naturally got more momentum rising that's right and so it's going to carry over faster yeah so what were the ideas is that bring it on up you're flatten your curve out yeah. where you don't have all that momentum you don't have this freight train momentum yeah you got this slow little talking truck mo momentum yeah so when you push it it slows down a lot faster and when you take it off the grill instead of gaining 12 degrees it might gain three or four yeah um i took i i think the last contest i cooked it didn't gain anything yeah i took it off and it didn't rise. it just sits there yeah so that's what i like because it gives you a lot more control yeah. over your finished product and steaks finish different in hot weather versus cold weather. We found that out, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. Say, pro tip uh, from Matt Overson. Hey, start out with a room room temperature steak. You're going to have less carryover. You're going to uh, be able to control that a lot better. If you don't have a way to heat it up, just say it's cold outside. Um, I know people that they do different things to warm it up. You can bring a separate little – people have a toaster oven in their trailer. Yeah, they'll bring, a, yep. bring a little smoker and they'll just warm it up. Uh, I can put them in a red box and put a sterno in there and they'll warm it up. We've done that, haven't done we? Done that. <laughs> I've also taken a couple, taken the steak and put them in a clamshell and stuck them on the dash of the truck so yeah. the sun heats them up. That's and right. I got them up to 98 degrees. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of different things. The idea is you don't know what the temperature is, put a probe in it so you can see what your, you know, your temperature is pre-cooked. Get an idea of how much carryover you're going to get, how long it's going to take to cook. Yeah. Kevin Kevin Bongard said, it's 103 in Colorado. I could get a good reverse sear out here on the hood of my truck. <laughs> you could. <laughs> Amen, brother. Y'all be careful out there. <laughs> we got a lot of people joining us tonight. Thank y'all for joining us. Joe Wilson, uh, Joey Strong, uh, Angela Denton, Greg Snyder, and Kevin Bongard have chatted in. Chat's open, guys. Y'all come and join us tonight. We appreciate y'all so much. And, man, we just going to, you know, Ronald Byron says, have fun and cook a steak. I think we're going to do that a little bit tonight. Yeah.
man, what's that thing sitting at? About four eighty. Depending on where it's there. at, somewhere between five hundred. Yeah. And over on this side, closer to four twenty. On so look at there. On the fan side, it's three eighty, and on the on the opposite of the fan side is five hundred. Ah. Well, I'm glad of the fan right now. <laughs> we'll take the fan. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, we got a thicker and a thinner one. We'll just throw the thinner one over here on the hot side and the thicker one on the cooler side. That's right. And maybe it'll even it out. Adjust and adapt. Yeah. Yeah. What's so that? there's there's a – we I like a medium rare steak. I don't know about y'all, but SCA doesn't like that. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what I like. And the sear, like this method of the sear, kind of works in that favor. That's right. Unless you bring it on up to temperature already, it works out good for medium rare steak. Because by the time that outside gets good, that inside is just perfect for me. Yes. That's yes. right. That's so I right. like it good and crusty. couple other things. We're going to throw a couple of French technique at you. We're going to hit it with a little butter right at the end. We got. Hold on. We got a steak cam. Hold on just a second. Show me what you're working with. We're going to hit it with a little rosemary and thyme. All right. We're going to hit it with a little... A little uh, of Emerald's favorite garlic. Garlic. And uh, some buttra. Buttra. And that's uh, Paula Dean's favorite. That's Paula Dean's favorite, <laughs> And lots of it. That's right. Can't get too much butter. Yeah. So we went on the outside, y'all. We went with, uh, with Will Collier's DB180 steak and beef rub because it doesn't have any sugar in it. And at this high heat in this cast iron skillet, you're going to have a lot of sugars. And so, I mean, you don't want a lot of sugars because you're going to have a lot of contact and that will burn uh, quicker than anything else. A lot of high heat, y'all. We don't want a lot of sugar. Um, there's enough in that double garlic butter. We coated it. We scraped it off. So we're not going to have an excessive amount on the outside. There's going to be some that's soaked in it. Yeah. So old school cast iron steak. So last weekend we did KCBS. And uh, yes. this weekend we're doing KCBS. And also... A Friday night steak cook off all up for the Shriners this weekend. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So we uh we well, had a great time. Tell me, last tell weekend. me how that happened over in Wynn, Arkansas. We eased on over there and knocked the cobwebs off and come off with a reserve grant. Man, yeah, got the hardware behind you right that's here. Right, that's right. So we were happy. We had a seven oh six. Me and buddy Jeff Maynard. Man, and we uh, slipped over there and got four calls and we're very fortunate. It had a it was hot out, but man, we enjoyed it. it had a great time. Yeah. Anything over a 700 in KCBS is crazy time. 706 usually win for you, but yeah. Brad Lineker, that getting basted fella, he, he, don't, he don't pull no punches, Jack. Uh, he quit school because of recess. <laughs> he don't play. Uh, that's just how it is. Man, but a 706 got you a reserve. Yep, got us uh, got us enough momentum to feel like we could go over and do something at the Shriners. So. Yeah. We're going to go over and cook a steak tomorrow night. And – uh. We're going to set up and get a steak turned in. What is it, 8.30? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere around there for the Shriners in Nesbitt. Uh, we're going to prepare and get ready, and then I'm going to uh, stay the night. Me and Jeff are going to get big meats on, and then we're going to roll out to Prentice, Mississippi. Yeah, we got a busy weekend. We got a busy weekend. Busy weekend. We're going to cook a steak Friday night, and then we're going to go down to Prentice, Mississippi, and cook about 100 steaks. In for, the heat. In the heat. It <laughs> might have a tropical storm. I don't know. You never know what's happening. So uh, we're going to be on the pavilion. Thank you for uh, Bethany Baptist Church there in Prentice, Mississippi, um, and their pastor. And uh, they gave us a nice place to set up, host our dinner. And thank you for Jefferson Davis County Sheriff's Office and uh, City of Prentice for having us and uh, Steaks for Sheepdogs. So real glad to be there. About. So, um, Y'all don't know what Steaks for Sheepdogs is. If you watch this show, you have a hard time not knowing. Yeah. But uh, we just go out and we uh, show a little bit of love to our sheepdogs, which is our firemen and our military and our police. And yep. we show them a little love and give them a little back and make sure that they feel appreciated, especially when they've had some hardship in their precinct or That's in their right. firehouse. That's right. And I've said on this show before, those men and women in uniform are, are just much more than that. There are uh, Sunday school teachers. There are choir members. There are uh, volunteer basketball coaches. Whatever. They're just part of the community, and uh, we, you know, that that community lost a big, big chunk of their community, and so we want to show them love. So um, it's a blessing to get to have a busy weekend. 
man, yeah. <laughs> we get to go show some love to some folks, man. So, y'all, if you had never cooked one of these steaks, if you don't have a sous vide or a immersion circulator, yeah. They usually put them on sale for about a hundred bucks. And Nova is the brand I have. There's another Makes a nice good one. Father's Day present. It really does. They usually just don't stick them on sale till just around Thanksgiving or a little before. Yeah. They're about a hundred bucks now. They're gonna run you 160. Yeah. Um, uh, Jewel makes a good one. Uh, you know, you can honestly just heat this steak up in your toaster oven, like we're talking about, and sear it off like this. The cool thing about the sous vide is that it cooks in its own juices and gets to the exact temperature, and you can sear it off, and you don't have to watch it. Yeah. You just put it in perfectly temperature water in a vacuum seal bag. Let it stay there until you're ready to eat. What's that cooking gadget on late night TV that will <laughs> set it and forget it? Yeah, that's the Showtime rotisserie. That's it. Ron Popeil. <laughs> Ron, that was it. <laughs> set you it can set it and forget, forget it. it. That's right. So that's kind of like sous vide. You'll never forget. That's like I put that shit on everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's not just Frank's Red Hot. It's that seafood. Uh, it's that seafood cream sauce that we had last week. My my, I, my wife didn't let me forget that I ate that either. Dude, I couldn't let myself forget that I ate that. <laughs> I made me that omelet and I poured that on that omelet, dude. And well, I didn't put anything in the omelet. I just folded an egg over. It didn't need nothing. Nothing. So, so we're gonna hit this with a little duck fat spray, y'all. You can put bacon fat, lard. Beef tallow, it's up to you. Yeah. So we said we're gonna put the thick one over on the right hand side, right? Yep. So oh we're gonna go steak cam. Steak cam. Steak cam is up. It's up. We fix them get right in that skillet. We're gonna hit top of them, y'all. When we flip them, they're ready. It's hard to tell which way to turn when you're looking at it backwards. There you go. Boy, steak cam looks pretty good, man. Yeah, boy, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo. So, uh, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk, we talked a little bit about uh, some different charities, Operation Barbecue Relief, the one uh, that this, um, uh, contest tomorrow night and saturday's kcbs benefits uh shriners? the shriners man yeah if and y'all don't know what the shriners do the shriners 100 percent take care of kids whenever they have to go for treatment for chemotherapy for surgeries they will they do everything to go pick those kids up get them to the hospital make sure they're taken care of and get them back home helicopter yeah man plane, whatever they got to do to get those kids to and from being took care I, of. I don't know if you know this. That's Shriners are kind of near and dear to my heart. Absolutely. Uh, my wife is a Shriners kid. See there? She grew up, needed, uh, she only has one hand. She grew up, needed prosthetics. Growing up, they took care of all that. Shriners hospitals, they got fit. She got, she went to the Shriners hospital in uh, St. Louis. And they fitted her for uh, prosthesis, and and man, wasn't for the Shriners great work of those those people, they wouldn't have been able to afford that stuff. You and smell so, that? man, I was sitting there talking and trying to. Try, it was hitting me in the oh, nose. Oh no, well, not you, but uh. Oh, yeah, drooling. Oh my goodness, Charles Weldon. Y'all are making me hungry, and I just say, I appreciate it, brother. Get that crust on there, boy. I ate a late lunch, and I'm still, I could eat half, at least all of that. <laughs> We're going to give that a little sear first, and then we'll throw in our goodie. We don't want our butter to burn up too much. No. Uh, we got some cutting boards out here, too. Man, the aroma of that. Wait till this, wait till all the goody hits it. Yeah, I like, you know, like the butter gets in there and you start spooning on top of that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's all that good stuff. You gave somebody some Tabasco and an apron earlier and they said thank you. Oh, good, good. 
So, need some bone marrow compound butter. Bone, yeah. We've made that a time or two. Yeah. Let's see what our sear is looking like, y'all. There's what it looks like on the other side right Look now. Look at that. It's getting there, y'all. Flip that back over. I'm going to give her a, a spinny spin spin. Because it is cooler on this side. It is. Joey says, I think I'm headed to Bahia. <laughs> Joey Strong. I, Bahia on Thursday night gains a lot of uh, popularity. It's a good place to be. It is a good place to be. Y'all see what's going down now? Rosemary time. Beautiful. Garlic. Beautiful. Wow. Now, just in case, we got a little uh, Townsend Spice and Supply secret double knot spy mushroom powder on, what? on, on back up for that umami. I'm gonna need about a I'm gonna need about a quota of that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, boy. Let's get this flipped on over. Charles, thank you, brother. Thank you for all your service. Charles says, appreciate y'all's support of all of my Come brothers on. and sisters in blue. Much appreciated this day and time and time, trust me. Man, yeah. When the news tells you everything except what we're gonna tell you, we love you, we support you, and whatever y'all do, we uh I know there's some bad out there. But I know there's a lot of good. Hey, smell that. My goodness. That rosemary just does something, man. Tell you what else does something is that hot pan on my finger. Hey, bro. Let's get on. Get that glove everywhere it's supposed to be. <laughs> Use it. Man, man, man. I'm going to move. I'm going to move the steak cam. That's what just went down, y'all. Y'all see that? Ooh, man, man, man. So, y'all want to know what's going on with temperature in this right now? What's that say? 130. It's medium rare, actually. That one, the thinner one, one it thinner got, one's over. It got done. But this one's just right, y'all. Man, Look. that's probably SCA all day right there, isn't it? That one, or maybe a little over. This is a little, see, we got some pink in the middle. Got some hot. This is it, it got a little over more than we want. Yeah. Because it sat out here so warm, y'all. So there's an idea. Of, right. That steak is how quick it got to temperature. Yeah. So it may not be medium rare, but it's gonna be good to eat. But I bet it's gonna be medium good to eat. By Lord, I'm telling you. So I don't know if y'all can see here. We got we're gonna hit it with just a touch of this little bit of mushroom powder for some umami. Somebody says, are you going to cover it with the Cajun cream sauce? <laughs> oh, man. I thought about it if we had it left. Holly says, I knew I took the wrong route home tonight. Well, well, of course you did. Holly, if it's a Thursday night, you know what's going on. You know what's going down. I'm letting you see it right there in the steak cam. We are cutting it up. Let it rest. Come on, man. Let it rest. I ain't in for letting it rest. You want to see what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, one thing, technical side. If y'all are watching the stream on my profile, uh, Ashley's page, I can't see your uh, chat for some reason. I don't know if it only loads up two pages, but either watch it on Old School with Mark and Ashley or uh, Sweet Swine of Mine Distributing, because that way I can see your chat. So, thank you so much. Good gravy. I'm going to tell you something now. Look how juicy that steak is. I'm telling you, look, I mean... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Buck just licked my fingers. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but 
that flavor is on point. I know I could probably do more. That's really that. nice, but that's really nice. It could be cooked a little less. Yeah. But from a flavor standpoint, that crust, mm, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. That was really good. All of a sudden, our live studio audience started standing up. Started drooling over here. Yeah, along with Buck the Wonder Dog. Y'all come over here and get you some. Man, man, that was good. That's some fine eating. Jenny, where are you? Your family's here. Where are you at? <laughs> that is count. That is. That is. That is good stuff. Mm. Man, I'm on. Hop the slide over here. That's it, y'all. That's all you got to do. You may want to monitor your temp a little closer to get that more of a medium, medium rare. We're just right at the medium stage right now. Um, I mean, yeah. You can kind of see we, we're just warm pink. Warm pink center. And it's really, really nice warm pink center. Yep. But there's me. Medium rare is where I'm going. Yeah. So, stop it down around 125. Yeah. 120. If it's a thicker steak, this time it would probably be perfect. Yeah, that's right. But they're we pretty had, thin. We had some, some thin steaks. Yep. But that right there will eat you ain't any lying. day of the week. You ain't lying about that. My sister said um, they've been, her, she's on beer and uh barbecue boys okay and they've granted uh, they've granted there the last two two years at desota at the shriners come on and uh have they're not gonna be there this year give us a but chance. it's a great contest so give everybody else a chance yep that's got the crust man when you start going through this yeah you that, can hear it that crust is yeah you can hear the knife you know, I mean, even that one, look at that. Mm. That temperature is still righteous. One of those, I want one of those, those good pieces right there. I mean, they're all good. A little of this umami mushroom powder on it. Oh my goodness. Come on. Uh, Joey says, Mark, tell them what grain bow is. What a grain bow is. Now, that's a that's an Adam Gotro euphemism. Yeah. You ever hang around Adam Gotro? He's all about flavor, and he's all about texture. And when he cuts them, as, you know, if you ever cut a piece of brisket, and when yeah. you cut that slice, it's got that iridescent kind of peacock. Oh, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or wild turkey purples and stuff all in there yeah that's what we call the grain bow the grain bow i like that <laughs> so, so when he said when you see the grain bow he said get ready for a call yeah and that's just exactly right when i cut a piece of brisket and it lays over and that light's hitting it and it glistens purple and blue and iridescent sparkly that's the goal the grain bow is where it's at yeah somewhere <laughs> over the grain bow <laughs> i like that man I never thought about that one. Yeah. Need to do that. That's another shirt. Man, yeah. <laughs> That's another shirt. That is another shirt. Somewhere over the grain bow. I love it. Oh, me. Well, where did uh, where did you first, like, learn how to cook a steak? I mean, like, long back, who got you, like, I know Oklahoma, you're probably, growing up in Oklahoma, y'all ate a lot of beef. We ate a lot of steak. So, I mean, who who was that steak cooker for you in in your household? Mom and dad, either yeah. one. It was whichever one got home first, you know. Yeah. And they had a PK. 
You still, you still it's have right their, over there. Yeah, their original PK is sitting right over there, right? Yep, the one they had before I was even born. Wow, wow. So it's it really, and, and most of the time it wasn't a thick steak. I didn't know they cut them any. I thought that they grew three quarter of an inch thick. Yeah, like that was how they came off the cow. That's how they grew. They grew them like that. I didn't know they were any thicker. Yeah. So where I grew up, they didn't cut them thicker than that. Pork chops were thin. Your steaks yeah. were thin. That's just the way the butcher cut them. And we didn't know to tell them any different, you know. So well, cooked them on just and grilled them right over the fire. And mama would, you know, she cooked pork chops in the cast iron skillet, but usually yeah. the steaks were cooked on the PK. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I did know of a thicker steak because my granddaddy liked them that way. We went to uh King's King's grocery store in Marks, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. and that's where I'm from. If y'all know, that's where I'm from. Marks, Mississippi, or Lambert, Mississippi, is is really where I'm from. But <clears throat> my granddaddy go to King's grocery store, and it was a uh, it was a uh, a Chinese Chinese grocery store. Yep. I mean, really, if you know about the Delta, there was a lot of Chinese that um, that were uh, migrated to the Delta, and uh, just some wonderful people, uh, wonderful culture, and uh, but. They ran these grocery stores, cleanest grocery stores you'll ever find. And, uh, man, it had, always had good meat. Always had good meat, good butcher. And they would cut you those steaks as thick as you wanted it, wrap it in that white butcher paper. And, you know, with that with that tan-colored masking tape, you know <laughs> what I'm talking about? And right on the price on the outside after they weighed them. That was just, that's what I thought of as a steak. And uh, my granddad didn't like much heat on it. You know, <laughs> I learned how to eat a pretty, pretty rare steak early on. You know, rare, medium rare was probably how I liked it, you know, from the get go. My folks, you know, they didn't, they cooked them medium well. Yeah. And that's all we really knew until, you know, I, I moved off really and we had started yeah. having uh, medium rare. And still, when I come, when they my folks come visit me, they still like it. They still like it medium well. Maybe a little pink, but it's medium high, medium plus to medium well. Yeah. They'll still eat it. They'll still pick up one of them pieces and eat a medium rare piece. <laughs> but if there's a medium well one, they're gonna grab it. They're gonna grab it first. <laughs> I hear you. That was that was just the way. I mean, and Friday night was our steak night. Yep. We I called the show tonight steak night, but Friday night was our steak night. My granddad was a was a truck driver. He drove for Illinois Central, and he carried equipment from New Orleans to Chicago. And uh, when we got home, when he got home on Friday night, it was steak night. He said, I've worked too hard not to eat like this when I get home. <laughs> That's what I'm so, saying. So that was just the way, you know, that I grew up. That was all I knew. That was the way you were supposed to eat on Friday night. So I'm very glad to be in uh, SCA and cook steak and just have that passion of uh, cooking steak, trying to, trying to make it, uh, trying to learn more. Uh, and, and go cook the steak for a sheep dog. That's right. Now look at it. It's it's a passion of what we do all the time. So, um, absolutely, y'all. Is there any questions popping up? Shoot. Let's see. My sister said old school needs to come in to roast and boast August twenty seventh and twenty eighth. Uh, we can go live and y'all can compete over there. Man, Might have to happen, huh? That don't sound bad to me. Don't sound like a bad idea. Lord, uh, that right there ain't no good. Anybody got any questions? Uh, want to know what we're cooking with this weekend or anything like that? So we're going to cook basically about 100 steaks. Yeah. And um, we're uh, if y'all ever had priced ribeyes lately, Woo. I'm talking about the decent ribeye, $16 a pound. That's right. Uh, on the By the case price. So you start looking at them by the piece. I mean, they're getting on up the neighborhood of eighteen, nineteen dollars a pound. Yeah. Um, so we opted for strips this weekend. Yeah. We have got some real good upper two thirds choice strips. Um, we got eight of them, and we'll have plenty of steaks out of eight of them big old strips. Yeah. So we're going to cook strips. We're going to cook steaks for sheepdog mashed taters, which is darn good. Yeah. I mean, you got to tie my hands and keep me out of them because I'm on a diet. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to tie him up. <laughs> he he will not be on the potato station. God, no, uh-uh. I can't put him on the potato station. You got to be over there on the green beans, maybe. I'm I don't have to know. be on the green beans or yeah. something else. But the, the potatoes, I'm telling you, is a weakness. It is. They're pretty strong. If y'all hadn't had them, y'all steaks for sheepdogs potato seasoning. You mix in butter and sour cream and boiled red skin potatoes. Okay, that's it. All right, so tell them, tell them real quick. Like, uh, all right, so we're feeding a hundred people. Yep. How many pounds of potatoes are we gonna have? That part I hadn't got that far with it yet. I just thought about the steaks. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to throw you a curve. <laughs> I probably should have thought about it too. We're gonna do a little grocery shopping tomorrow, so we got to put our heads together well, on that. But I don't mean general. You think about thirty pounds, yeah? Somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty pounds. We buy two twenty pounds of the extra. They'll have extra. Right. Because whenever we're done, there's going to be more steam pans, and it's going to have a lots of steak juice in it. Yeah. And then if you whoever's last coming through the line will get them big water mashed potatoes, and you'll get that steak juice eased across all them yeah. mashed potatoes. That's I, right. I've been there before with my hand out. Mm. So that uh, I'm telling you, it's the tough dreams are made of. That's right. Man. Them, them mashed potatoes and some of that seafood cream sauce. Oh. <laughs> Give me a minute. That make you hurt somebody. Oh, the green beans are easy, y'all. Um, um, the green bean seasoning we fry bacon and saute onions. onions and throw it all back in there with bean seasoning. Yeah, heat it all up. Yep. Uh, we're gonna give them a roll. Um, pay homage to the fallen officer by making them a nice table. Yep. Uh, to uh, attribute to the fallen officer that were, we're there. We're gonna handpick them the best steak they they got. Yep. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get somebody to cook them, cook them best looking steak in, in the whole bunch, and that plate's gonna sit there. Now at the end of that, we're gonna throw it in the trash. But you know, it was for that officer, and everybody knows it was for that officer, and they're gonna see that they're gonna see that table. And if you can't, if you have to walk by that table and you can't. Something don't pull at your heart. That's right. Man, you better better check your pulse, baby. That's right. (laughs) You better check your pulse. So we got a good group of folks going down uh, to help with that. We're blessed to get to do it. If y'all want to be a part of it, we'd love to have you come help um, in Prentice, Mississippi at the Bethany Baptist Church on Saturday. Uh, If you can't be there, you can be there in spirit by donating and helping uh, do this again and raise money to buy steaks and potatoes and, and green beans and uh, gas to get us there and charcoal and all yep. that stuff you can you can help in many different ways whether your time or you want to help donate to go and uh, show uh, pay homage to our our sheepdog and as as we're doing this event on saturday we got two more in the works that need to happen uh pretty quick i mean not quick not like there's a timeline but uh we need to we need to be raising money and helping out with that so donations are always uh always a big help those are going to be some with the rising cost of steaks and uh those are going to be some pretty big numbers there we're going to need we need all the help we can get uh volunteer wise and donation wise if you'd like to have more information on both uh contact me i'll be glad to help you so how do you all right this is a perfect perfect thing you got a cast iron skillet you just used. Yep. What do you do with it? Well, first thing you do is get all that goody off of it. Yeah, and you run your finger through it. You know and what Joey Strong like? said you lick it. Oh, you so. do? You know what that tastes like? That tastes like the goody that's in Bill Mann's pit grip. Yeah, that <laughs> tastes like <laughs> Bill Mann had powdered that. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. <laughs> so all you do, y'all... That you don't ever don't ever hit soap on this. This this was my granny's cast iron skillet. Awesome. So all we're gonna do to clean this is this. We're gonna take this paper towel. Now if there's a little goody left in the bottom, just scrape. Just scrape it up. Don't get too aggressive, but this is was my granny's spatula too. That's right. You can tell that's just an old school tool right there. Real flexible. And, and a good wooden handle. These two were used together for many, many years before I was even thought of. <laughs> they probably old friends. Yep. 
And so give it a little scrape, y'all. Have Thank you have you seen a thing on Facebook about it looks like the don't tread on me flag? Uh uh-uh. uh. But it's got a cast iron skillet that says don't put soap on me. <laughs> I'll have to send it to you. That's another t shirt also. That's another t shirt for sure. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow, and don't put soap on me. <laughs> so. so, y'all, that's all you need to do. Once you get it seasoned, now the bottom of this skillet, y'all, is slick like Teflon. Until it gets like that, it, it, it'll take quite a few years to get to that point. Yep. Don't let your kids throw it in the dishwasher. Please don't put your cast iron in a dishwasher. Don't soak it in water. If don't. It, don't, th- don't take a hot cast iron skillet and put it under the sink and in the water either no let it cool down before you put any water up if any but don't put any soap no degreaser none of that what i'm doing right here is all you need to do to clean this guy up and get a nice little shine of butter and beef fat on it and it'll be ready for next time it's we get ready to cook season for the next time That's that right. thing is just slick in there yeah so did you did my grandmother had a special closet for her really? cast iron skillets okay like I remember going in her, uh, it was a small house, but they built a little closet and a wooden door opened up and they had cast iron skillets just na- like there was nails in the thing and they would hang on the door okay. and inside this cabinet. And I thought it was the coolest thing. You know, she had her cornbread, her cornbread uh, thing all laid in there that was shaped like cornbread. And then they had the wedge cornbread thing and. I mean, all kind of cast iron. I got a bunch of those cast iron skillets there too, but uh, that was that was all. I remember that like it was yesterday opening up that wooden door. That's and, like and all saying, my grandma used it was cast iron. What what did you need a Teflon skillet for it when you had the original? <laughs> when you had the original nonstick skillet? It, I'm telling you, <laughs> if you if you get something stuck in a cast iron skillet, you're not using it right. You know, right. I mean, it ain't been <laughs> properly seasoned. That's right. You still got some bare metal in there. Man, about running that through that goody. Man. There's a whole lot of different ways to cook steak. That's right up there. That's right. Gary says you can't beat an old, old school cast iron cooking. Ain't no doubt. That Gary Castillo? Yeah. I'm going to tell you, now that since we've done the biscuits in the cast iron, I can't make biscuits without putting it in the cast iron skillet. Nope. Nope. I can, oh, oh, double butter. I mean, store-bought biscuits just don't do it for don't me anymore. Don't cut it. Don't cut it. Yeah. So the next cast iron episode, we may have to ease on with a, with a, I don't know, something gumbo or jambalaya. Or, heck, I, we might ought to just break it on down and do an egg episode, too. Man. Maybe have an omelet on one and maybe do a fried egg. Did we just we talked about eggs like a while ago. Maynard said that he would if there was a choice of giving up protein, yep. That egg would be his last choice. Probably so. It's perfect to use in so many different things. If you think about like in have you ever seen like cooking shows in foreign countries or something? I watch a lot of YouTube videos where they do a lot of street cooking and Eggs stuff like that. They it. use egg everywhere. Like pancakes and all these these egg cakes and, and those little sandwiches. those little things the little quail eggs that they put in those little things they roll them over with the little sticks. Yep. I don't even know what to call that, but it it's good. I agree with you. That's uh, you don't think about how many how shelf stable it is. It doesn't require refrigeration. Yeah. Uh, it's heavy protein. It's not heavy on your stomach. It's good as it's good in baking. It's good by itself. Eggs probably need to be a it needs to be a regular thing. We need to start adding on that. Yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the first person that ate one though? Or an oyster. I'm thinking of even I don't know, man. I mean, I can understand an oyster came out of like a shell, but came this out of is something that came out of chicken's butt. <laughs> I mean, you saw the chicken lay the egg and then you gonna crack it and go, whoop, I'm gonna fry this up. Let me have two. I don't know. Chicken butt sandwich. Yeah. Chicken butt sandwich. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've gone off the deep end, folks. Uh, this is what Mississippi heat does to you. You start talking this way. 
That's right. Um, but I mean, like we were talking about different cultures eating different animals or mm -hmm. whatever. And, you know, I guess eating a chicken or a cow was funny to somebody the first time. Uh -huh. Ain't funny to me. It's serious business. <laughs> serious. Serious business. Like one of the one of the things that I played with when I was watching a lot of YouTube videos on eggs was learning how to make that Oma rice omelet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to do that here quick too. I think that Oma rice omelet may have to be because it it incorporates a lot of these two things. It incorporates a really rich beef demi glace. Okay. Which is just a, a superiorly reduced, thick, rich beef stock. Yeah. And, and usually with bones. Yeah. And usually done with veal even. So, and then you make this fluffy, really light, creamy omelet. And you yeah. don't cook it all the way through. It's it's the shape of a of a shell. Yeah. And you leave it creamy and you serve it over the top of fried rice on okay. top of that. And then once you serve it, you cut it open. And because it's still wet on the inside and it's so light and fluffy, it envelops that bed of fried rice. It just kind of falls over it. It just opens up and falls over. It looks like something out of the, I don't remember, you remember that old movie, Cocoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When them little eggs opened up. Got that diabetes <laughs> dude in the, in the movie, don't he? <laughs> Wilford Brimley? Yeah. Is that right? That <laughs> Wilford Brimley. Yes. Don't give me diabetes. And I then, got you. Uh, so then you cover it up with that demi gloss. And, okay. And it's just, I mean, it is, that is old school Japanese food. And yeah. I had a guy on there that was just about crying, talking about his mama making him, uh, or his grandmother making him omer rice. Yeah. And that was that's what they want. We like chicken and dumplings. My grandmama made us chicken and dumplings. Shoot, yeah. <laughs> and his grandmama, when they came back in from fishing or something with his grandpa or omer his dad, rice. she would make him omer rice, and that's comfort food to them. So yeah. that's old school Japanese. Uh, and I can relate to it. I've, I've, I hadn't mastered it, but I've made it a few times to where I can understand where he's coming from. It's very, very rich and decadent and comforting. All right. So after last week, we got such in this, I mean, this overwhelming fuzzy feeling with this seafood crawfish. <laughs> uh, I know I can't get seafood, um, cream, Cajun cream sauce. I, I don't know what I was trying to say. His tongue flies. I know. I got to thinking about it again. I will salivate. So Cajun cream sauce. So we decided to dedicate one week out of every month to be Cajun week. Yep. And so did we figure out when the original mini pot night is? I believe mini pot's the third Thursday. Third Thursday of every month. So That's we're going to Todd Bro mini pot. We're going to coincide with Todd B's mini pot. Todd B's mini pot. What? Well, no, Todd our, B's. yeah, not our mini pot, oh. but the original mini pot oh, okay. is the third Thursday of every month. So we're going to have Cajun night on that night. That might be this week, this Thursday. I'm not saying tonight. Yeah, Todd I'm B saying, is tonight. I'm saying moving July. Forward. Yeah. Moving forward, the third week of July will be Cajun week. In July. And if you ain't ever watched awards on Top B's Mini Pot, you need to make sure you, you're a friend of Adam Gotro on Facebook. Yeah. Or Nakia White. or uh, Is Nakia down there a good bit? Oh, yeah. He's right there by him. Yeah. Uh, or, or go like Top B's Mini Pot on Facebook or Todd Bro. Uh, uh -huh. Watch one of them because they always show the awards at Mini Pot. Now, what are they called? Woo-woo. Woo-woo. Woo-woo-woo. <laughs> Todd B is the original woo woo. <laughs> we were at Memphis and Bay and we were just woo woo woo. What's that? July 15th. That's July 15th. Cajun 15th. Night. That's Cajun night right here. All right, cool. We got to figure out what Cajuns eat when it's hot, hot. I don't know. They like it. <laughs> same thing. I think they eat the same thing all the time. You want some rice? Yeah. And whatever it is, yeah. Cook some rice. Cook some rice. <laughs> Don't take the starch off of it. Joe, Joe Wilson was talking to me about frying rice ahead yeah. of time, and then it makes it not uh, as sticky together yeah. and all that, and takes the starch off of it. He said, but don't do that in front of a cage. No, uh -uh. they will, <laughs> They will kick the they crap out of you. They don't like it, not one bit. <laughs> they won't like it at all. 
Uh, so, what now? I, man, we're about I, done for the night, and we're early. Yeah, we are early. It's been a. It, I'm gonna tell you, today's been a weird day for me. I uh, we had a uh, celebration of life uh, uh, for a, a great friend of mine. His name was Peyton McCormick, and uh, it was one of them. Hey, man, I'm going to see you later kind of deals because my faith in Christ tells me that I'm going to see my friend again. So, uh, but it was, didn't make it for an easy day. Uh, it, you know, it was, it was a rough day. Yep. I came straight from Tupelo and, uh, came here and went home and got my stuff real quick and, uh, came back here, but it's, it's kind of, a, I've been in the road and hanging out with friends and reminiscing and telling good stories and, all that kind of stuff today, so it's it's been kind of a weird. That's where my mind's been all day. So uh, if my if I don't seem like I'm fully here, that's probably where I'm at. So, so oh, hey, we can put on the cam and show them. Man, hold is, on. Is the state cam up? Still? Yeah, state cam still up. Hold on, just a second. So y'all, we trimmed the uh, competition meats earlier, and we got we cut the end of our chicken legs off. We cut um. Cut our brisket down, separated it, trimmed the pork, yeah, we trimmed did. our ribs, and we decided we just put it all in a pot. And uh, <laughs> you see that over there on the screen there, Mark? Huh? Oh yeah, I see it. I see it. So what this is, y'all, is all of those. It's sitting there just doing its thing. It's pieces of rib, brisket, chicken, and pork butt. All the extra pieces. We put it in there. We blanched it. We went in here and skimmed off the foam. There's some little bits and pieces of fat out here. We're going to have to come and skim. But what we'll probably do is we'll sample this. Yeah. And we'll, um, we've got a pot over here of all of our stuff we've been skimming off. And then we'll let it cool. We'll pull off sort of the impurities and the extra fat off the top of it. Yeah. And essentially, you could turn this into one or two things. You could make a like a Vietnamese pho with this. And serve it with noodles and sprouts and daikon and jalapeno and cilantro and yeah. culantro. Or you could turn this and turn uh, down and go the route of ramen with it. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. And with the pork and everything, it probably lends itself even better for ramen. So we may make us a really rich, like a show you ramen broth. Yeah. With this. How about Keep that? some noodles in it. I'm dealing whatever you're you're putting out there. We may have to go ahead and we'll ball us an egg. If you've never made a ramen egg, we'll sort of do the, the half boiled egg. Yeah. Uh, not soft boiled, but still a tacky center. Yeah. And then uh, soak it in some Wilsonshire for oh. a day or so. And then we can, you cut that in half and lay it in there with your ramen. And we'll take some of these little extra bits and pieces of some of that, that rib meat in there. And we'll, yeah. We'll serve that in there with our ramen. And man, that, that might have to go down. Sounds good, my brother. So there it is, y'all. Always make a stock out of everything that's left. Don't throw it in the garbage. The big it's old chunks of fat, stuff. you can take and grind your, your, your trimmings down if you've got enough of it for ground meat. But this is all the small stuff that just didn't make it into the trim pile for ground meat. And it's going to make an awesome bowl of ramen. So some bowls, I mean, some bones in there and all that stuff. That's right. So, all right. Well, let's switch that back over there like that. We'll hide that on there. Man. I'm gonna tell you through the greatness of technology, we've gotten real. We look, we look more professional than we are. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> hey, look, that thing's winking at you. You, you better wink. Come that. on now, that, really. yeah. Man. I'm gonna tell you, that's good. That's fire. It's hey, really good. our good friend Ranger Rob. I talked to him today. He's doing really good. He set up uh, his food truck over in. Uh, oxford for the last two days yep i'm not quite sure where he's at but i'll let y'all know before next week we'll put it out on old school but uh <clears throat> man he's like sold out today he was yep. still had like seven people staring at him at four or five o'clock today and he'd been there all day serving breakfast and everything so he i said man you know uh, not a lot of people get you know get off work and want to go home and cook, man. You're gonna do all right right there at dinner time. Somebody so. said it was Lamar Avenue and I can't remember the cross street. I think it was on Lamar. So check him out. I'm gonna put Facebook uh, Facebook uh, messages up 
about where uh, you can find the Ranger. Ranger Rob is our uh, friend Robert Cullum from over there in, is it in Aberdeen. No, he's from uh, Myrtle. Myrtle, Mississippi. Over there by New Albany. And that's right. And he's a, a you know veteran of the of the of the state as a game warden for about twenty years. Yeah. And now he's decided he wants to uh, take his extra time, which he's got more of now, and run a food truck. He he's got more. He makes more time than I do. I can't I, believe I, how, how he does it. I don't either. And uh, but don't be a stranger to the ranger. Go see him over there <laughs> in Oxford. And uh, he's an undercover butt rub. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't tell his trailer, he's got both of those things written on it. <laughs> the undercover butt rubber. Uh, but he does a good job. He's a hard worker, and uh, he makes good food. He puts out great-looking food. Uh, Y'all go take care of him. Uh, he had everything from bologna sandwiches to barbecue wraps and sausage sandwiches, sausage sandwiches and nachos and Pulled all pork. that full pork everything uh so y'all go take care of ranger rob so nick we're not sure what we're gonna do next week y'all that's up in the air we will post it let y'all know what we're gonna do right along the time just be looking for for uh picking oh. ashy's hat and what we're gonna cook next week yeah and we got to talk about okay so we got to talk about our we still got 15 percent off of everything uh all the seasoning and the sauces when you purchase a hundred dollars or more that's right that's right when you buy a pk original you get or tx or tx i say that's right arkansas texas i say right. that the same so when you buy a pk original arkansas or texas you get a free cover and a free bottle of texas beef from mark lambert sweet swine of mine yep and then the red box special you get a lambo combo Gift, gift pack that's right with, and that includes the lambo combo a bottle of our original of the original rub or, mm -hmm. or you can get the other ones if you come in you can pick a couple extra oh you can swap which one if you if you're here yeah if not we're gonna throw in what we got. yeah we're gonna throw in what we got so <laughs> uh and the roasted garlic is traditional what that combo comes that's with. right and so and you get the heat diffuser uh for free all for 275 yep plus shipping so perfect father's day gift I know a lot of people are taking advantage of that already. Absolutely. We got a new shipment in of red box smokers uh, that was in storage today, yep. right? Yep. And so we got plenty. If you want a red box, you got till the end of June to break out on this deal. But you ain't got to, but till uh, tomorrow to get one for dad for Father's Day. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you better come out the warehouse. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we got the contest going on. What's in your red box? Yep. And we got the pimp your red box, and I've seen some cool stuff like people putting grease drip shelves and mat with magnets. I don't know. I have, I'll have to go back and look. The, but people are really uh, fixing up their red box. Somebody on chat needed a new thermostat for their red box. You we sell, got some. You can sell those separate. We got some. All right. So I'll have to go back and look and see who that was. Um, Hank Couch says, I got a good idea for the red box this weekend. Hank Couch. Imagine that. <laughs> Hank Couch has a good idea for the red box all the time. <laughs> Pig hearts, squirrel brains, whatever. Just throw it in there. Raccoon, yeah, whatever. Raccoon, squirrel pizza, whatever. He'll cook any varmint there is in that red box and make it look good. <laughs> so we'll figure out what we're going to do uh for next week y'all will post it and ashley will also post and show you uh the choice of hats that he's gonna wear next week y'all watch us if you're we, not, might, we might have to go live tomorrow night just on the just on the uh on the state cook-off on the state cook-off let's do it uh and you might see us saturday sometime uh we might go live from uh from uh steaks for sheepdogs event so stay tuned follow our page uh subscribe on youtube for sweet swan of mine distributing that's YouTube right page. old school with mark and ashley and man we've had a good time as always yep i know we stretched it a little bit here but man we showed you something very simple and quick it wasn't a whole lot to prepare it wasn't a whole lot to cook we just cooked a steak hot and fast man it was good eating too on grandma's skillet on grandma's skillet <laughs> all right man hey let's out with a little prayer brother let's say it our gracious heavenly father lord we just thank you for this day and we thank you for this time together Lord, I just want to pray for my friend Peyton and pray for his family. 
And Lord, just be with them in the in the coming days, Lord. That's when it gets harder. Lord, just let them know they are not alone. Thank you for this friend here. And thank you for these friendships. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all have thank a good week. Thank you for week. watching, y'all. Y'all have a good week. Love God and love people. Call your friends. Let them know you're thinking about them. If they need somebody to talk to, talk to them. All right. Love y'all. We'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.